as a sort of preface to what I'm going to be talking about, I'm not particularly taking into account what would need to change before these suggestions could be implemented. These are just my suggestions and I would hope that you know enough people would like them, enough people would hear them, that you know the Western nations could start moving towards it. Because I know that some of these ideas are lofty. Anyway, the education system, in my opinion, is in need of a serious overhaul. We continue to be teaching in about the same way that classes were taught back when we thought that children were essentially animals that had to be beaten until they behaved. We realize today that this is not the case, and yet we persist in using fear instead of interest as the motivating factor. We continue to cram dozens of students into a single room, even though that is hardly conducive to everyone's learning experience. So, a lot of changes could be made. Obvious things that would be good if it were entirely financial, financially viable would be smaller classrooms, less students, more teachers. But, more specifically, I think that we can all agree that music really helps at least some people learn. Because when you think back, what do you have, what is more stuck in your brain? That pop song that you heard five, ten years ago, or the lesson that you had maybe one year ago? If music was used more to you know, a good place to start would be using the Element Song by Tom Lehrer to teach people who need to remember the entire table of elements, you know, help them remember it. So music would be very good. I think practical application of a lot of what we learn in geometry would really help. Instead of page after page of this abstract crap that we then have to imagine before us. I'm not saying we can't, I'm saying it's boring and it doesn't have to be. There's no reason to make something... I mean, taxes are boring. Those aren't supposed to be interesting. They're just... you do them. But these are things that you want these kids to be able to do for the rest of their lives quite well at that. Instead of using fear, which does not work as soon as you stop being afraid, to try to inspire some interest. Instead of imagine that there's this or that geometric shape, you know, give them a bucket and, you know, have them measure it. Then have them figure out how much water should be able to be in this bucket, and then they can test the theory, and they can see if they got it right. And if they didn't get it right, they might be more likely to go back over what they did and say, where did I make a mistake? Because I want this to work out. This was interesting, you know. These are just my thoughts on it. Feel free to disagree. You know, and in general, and, you know, maybe there could be a bunch of buckets in the class and you know they could take it home for homework you know to figure out how much should be able to be in the bucket and then you know something like that for example in general just more practical applications I've only been to one school where there was practical application and it was not of the regular subject. It was of film production. And you just learn far more in much less time. Whenever I play a video game, it's always 
You know, you read the manual, and then you play the game, and then you figure out how the things actually work. In real life, things like math and such, you know, you try it on paper, and then you try it in real life, and then you know how it works. I just think we could do so much more by cutting out the abstract middle portion there and just going straight to the practical application. Give them some simple tasks that they can do with what they already know. It is infinitely more satisfying to have some something you can have in your hands, something you can show to others. Who doesn't enjoy shop class more than math? Okay, the math geniuses who don't like physical stuff, maybe, but if math was made more physical, you'd get the more physically inclined students more interested, and the math geniuses would have something to show for it instead of just, you know, a nice looking report card. I also think that video games and computer programs, and the moment I say this, you know, some people are going to get this image in their heads, oh, it's going to be way too flashy, and no. I played video games to help with my math skills when I was a kid. I still remember these games. I don't remember all the names, but for those who might have played the same, Math Rescue, that worked. I played through that game, I don't know how many times, and it vehemently improved vastly improved my math skills, but not my vocabulary, apparently. Then there was one where you had to go to an island, you fought crabs, not that kind, get your mind on gutter. You were basically searching for a hidden treasure by, you know, of pirates. And I think there was at least one more there were also some really bad ones, but those two were really good, and they really helped. And it's not like I was playing this stuff in class. I was playing this at home, because I had fun with it. It didn't feel like work. Trust me, I hate math. I've always hated math. But that really helped, because to get far in the game, you have to do a lot of math in it. And, you know, there's instant gratification. You know, you do something, you get a reward. It's not like, you know, you're just sitting there in the book, oh great, I did this math, you know, problem, and now there's ten more on the same page. Great. No, you get some, you know, animation, some sound, you know, you feel like you're making progress. And it doesn't always have to be video games. Sometimes it can just be programs. I, and quite a lot of other people, I would say, just enjoy sitting in front of the computer solving these problems more than sitting with paper and pencil. I also, an another program that helped improve my math skills was simply a program. It was basically, it kept providing math problems within a certain area of a certain, yeah, whatever, you know what I mean, of math, and it really helped, you know, it wasn't flashy, it was not even sure it was terribly attractive, now that I think about it, the design was, the colors, and I'm not even that visual of a guy, but anyway, it still worked, it helped far more, and again, I'm not saying put them in front of a computer all the time in the classroom, it could be like maybe a short period of time in the classroom or if you don't think that that's a good idea then for the home a lot of kids have computers in the western world today you know why don't we give them something useful to do with them make that you know part of the homework spend this and this much time on this and this or maybe a selection of them, just the same difficulty level, of course, but so that they could choose the exact approach, you know, if, you know, math rescue, you're a little kid and you have a butterfly that dumps sludge on 
monsters. I like that as a kid, but not everyone will necessarily. But we could easily design enough that most people, you know, the girls can have princess stuff if, you know, that's what they like most. The guys can have soccer sports stuff, you know, whatever. This could be done, and these programs wouldn't necessarily have to cost a lot of money or be that difficult to make. You know, get proper game companies to do them and just, you know, a game company, I would say, would make it as long as there's a market for it. Let's say that they make it and the various schools around the country buy it. You know, it doesn't have to be hugely expensive, but if a lot of schools buy it, each of them buy it, there you go, profit for the game company, and they would have the expertise, they would have, you know, they would be able to program it properly and animate something nice. I mean, what I played was nice for the time, you know, the mid-90s or whatever, so... Anyway, I think that's about what I had to say on this particular subject. If you want me to elaborate on anything, or you have any other suggestions or whatever, please feel free to comment.